Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. If Guys, if we don't have some air flying around here, would you please take care of that and get some air going in this place? I see a lot of people having heat issues. Here we go, verse 23. It says, by faith Moses. Now look, Moses is not the guy doing the faith. Ch check this out. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. That word means beautiful. And they were not afraid of the king's or the pharaoh's commandment. Now let's immediately, we take this, we know the story. This is in the hall of faith, a bunch of people in Hebrews 11. Let's immediately go to the original story so we can track what's going on. Hold your place here and turn back to Exodus chapter 1. The very first book, in the uh, chapter in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 1. And I want to read you this story. It is a great story. It has all the necessary elements to make a wonderful story, and the best thing is it's true. It really happened. In Exodus chapter 1, we'll begin in verse number 7, and we're going to read a little bit, so you just enjoy the story. It says in Exodus chapter 1, beginning verse number 7, And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly. Look up here. Last message, we, we left Joseph in Egypt. He was the vice president, you remember? Well, his generation died. His brothers died, and there arose up a Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph. And you've got all these descendants, these Jews living now in Egypt, and they start getting bigger and bigger and bigger of foreigners in a different country. Look what happened. It says, And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased uh, abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more, more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, uh, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also into our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set uh, over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. Look here, here's the first thing they did. We're going to work them hard. We will crush them under the load of work. We'll kind of make them slaves to afflict them, verse 11, with their burdens. And they built uh, for Pharaoh treasured cities, Pithom and Ram Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, that word of prayers twice. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage and mortar and brick and all manner of service in the field. All, all the service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the midwives. Here's the second thing he does. The king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew wit midwives. These are, everybody who know what a midwife is, this is when you can't afford a, a, a baby doctor. No, no, it's not that. It's in these days, those two ladies in, among the Jews that delivered babies, all right? And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, uh, of which the name of the one was Shipfra, and the name of the other, uh, Pua. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and you see them upon the stools, these were birthing stools, no time to go into that, if it be a son, comes out a boy, then you shall kill him. And if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and, and, and said unto them, Why have you done this thing, and have saved the men children alive? The midwives said unto Pharaoh, by the way, I don't believe they're lying here. I believe this is what, how God helped them. Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere or before the midwives come in unto them. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives. And the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all of his people, saying, Every son that is born, here's the third thing he does. First, Let's, let's oppress them with hard work. Secondly, tell the midwives, when a boy comes out, kill him. The third thing he tries that is something that's pretty serious. Verse 22, and Pharaoh charged all his people, all the Jews, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. And there went a man uh, out of the, say this again, let me say it again, verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, same idea, same word, beautiful child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for, uh, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and pitch and put 
uh, the child they're in, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink, or in the reeds at the brink or the edge of the river. And his sister stood afar off to wit what should be done unto him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags or the reeds, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. When then said the sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. You may be seated. That's a great story. That's just a great story. It's an awesome faith, a story of faith and the outcome. And in our text in Hebrews, the first verse we looked at, the parents of Moses are commended for their incredible faith. And their faith came in in the fact that they hid the child. For three months, it did not pitch him into the river like everybody else, the Nile River, like everyone else was doing, and what the government, what Pharaoh had told them to do. What was it about their great faith that caused Almighty God to work in a mighty way in their life? Put yourself in the situation. This is a real story. These are not fake people. What was it that, were, what was it that God commended so much that he would write their names in the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, that he would say, these people have great faith. I want to have great faith. Do you want to have great faith, Christians? Yes or no? Okay, so what was it about them hiding this baby that God says is great faith? And how can we have faith like this? Now look, here it is. They chose to obey God despite personal risk to themselves and to baby Moses had they been found out. Let's see what was involved in that great faith. Well, first of all, they had a God view of the situation. In the midst of this cultural depravity that they were in and people all around them, their own people pitching babies into the river, government telling them to pitch babies into the river. In the midst of this, they had a God view, not a society view. Egyptian pharaohs were known as despots. They were absolute dictators. This one had already shown his cruelty on a daily basis to, to the Jews by afflicting them, as we already read. Burdensome tasks, building cities, probably the Sphinx. You've seen the Sphinx, the pyramids. These were probably engaged in by the Jews. Pharaoh made them serve with rigor. The word appears twice in, in this chapter, and it means severity. It means cruelty, to break them. The idea was that he would whip them and break them by hard labor, and, they, and eventually they would thin out. He was trying to break the people that flourished in his land. He was afraid of them and was trying to thin them out. He tells then the Hebrew midwives in verse 16 to kill the boy babies at birth. Okay, when you're going into these houses and you're delivering these babies, if it comes out a boy before mom or dad knows what's going on, kill it. Kill it. They wouldn't do it. Amen for these midwives. Not going to do it. No matter what happens, we're not going to do it. And God helps them by causing very quick births before they got there. And I believe this is very real. So they would go to the house. They were calling this lady's having a baby. And by the time they got there, the baby was already born. And they could not do this murder secretively. And God helped them out. Pharaoh ups the ante of the severity. And he commands that all the people who are Jews. Okay, fine. That's not going to work. This despot, this dictator. Think of him like Adolf Hitler. That's a good way to think of him. So he decides to throw all, this is what you're going to do. By command, my command as dictator of this land, severe dictator, all Jewish babies that are born, you're going to throw them into the river by my command. Of course, this meant death by drowning or the abundant crocodiles in the River Nile at the time. You say, Pastor, are you supposed to, you, you, you expect us to really believe that this is a real story, that there would be a government leader, a pharaoh, that would tell them to pitch him in the river? Listen, this was during the time that the Egyptians served many gods, and one of them, one of the gods was named Sobek, and he was the crocodile god that came from the river Nile. This was, pro excuse me, this was probably a sacrifice, uh, something, a superstitious sacrifice that all the Egyptians would have really been into. It would probably have been a very positive thing that these Jews are pitching their baby boys in the river to appease the crocodile god. You say, people believe that. They still believe this superstitiously in other countries. In India, in Brazil, if you were to go there, you still find this kind of stuff. So what were Amram and Jochebed to do? The real folks. Listen, folks, this was not an American democracy.